Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Nemeseek, and today we're going to do a breakdown of these two trailers that came out for Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City, which was neat. I just didn't expect a second trailer. I guess they called it the international trailer, and that one, I th I think, just had better music. <laughs> I mean, I, it was an interesting choice for the first trailer, and I know some people that watched it and liked that music choice, um, but for me, I was like, uh, I don't know. It was, it was interesting. It was definitely a bold move, uh, but, uh, but I liked kind of hearing the... Um, you know, just like the instrumental stuff and, and kind of more somber stuff in the second trailer, because that's what I'm kind of hoping that the tone will be a little bit. But I think also that Goofy, you know, the, the four non blonde song they played in the first trailer, I feel like is uh, it was intentional because the movie might have a little bit of, you know, cheese to it. I'm, I'm guessing uh, you definitely tell with some of the dialogue in the trailer that they're going for. Uh, some semi-serious, but also be horror at the same time with their budget. They're considering that, so they're aware of it, at least to me. I mean, some people don't see it that way, but uh, that's it seems like the approach uh, they're going for to me from the trailers. So, uh, so now we have these images. So what I did was I'm breaking these images down over three videos. And, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to focus on images in this one that I think are more related to Resident Evil 1, the video game. And then the next video will break down the trailer just as far as footage that I think relates to Resident Evil 2, the video game. And then for the third video, we'll do, you know, kind of like just random photos, like just images that I saw that I think are kind of their merged storyline since they're merging the stories of one and two. And we'll save that for the third one. And if there's any images I miss that you want to discuss, we can definitely do it in the comments below. And so we're going to start here with Raccoon City, uh, this shot here. And again, some of these might be a little blurry or, or not too great of quality. Um, I did my best with the screen grabs, but uh, but unfortunately, um, some of these, no matter how I went frame by frame, and some of them still didn't turn out that well. Uh, so I'm hoping that there's not a lot of shaky cam in the movie because uh, cause sometimes that happens when characters are moving and they're kind of blurry and you just can't get a good you know shot of them. But, uh, but I tried my best on some of these, so uh, you know, so hopefully the quality isn't too bad. Um, but this is just nice. It's a cool, long, wide shot of the city, and I think uh, we're seeing it from the Arclay Mountains, I'm going to guess, because there's some like trees in, in the bottom left and right corner. Um, and then you see, I think in the background, you see the police department. Um, and the, if you look on the left there, uh, right above the, the tree, you see like a clock tower looking building. I think that might be the RPD. So it was just cool to see this wide shot of the city and it not look like um, you know, Toronto, <laughs> which is where they did previous Resident Evil movies. And I was like, okay, that's clearly not a, a Midwestern town. Um, this looks a little bit more Midwestern, even though this was also shot in Canada. But at least it, there's not a lot of skyscrapers and things like that. So, um, so I kind of dug this. This is a cool shot. Uh, but then we have a shot of Jill Valentine here. And she's looking terrified by something. Her eye looks... Like, I don't know if it's like just the way it's shot or if they did some kind of color correction to this, but her eye looks a little weird, like it's turning white or something. Um, and then she's holding some device in her hand. So I'm going to guess this is, her hair is very disheveled too. So I'm going to guess this is probably near the end of the movie, if not in the final scene of the movie. Um, I'm trying to think of what that could be behind her. That looks like a light that could be above an elevator, you know, that or, or a tram or something uh, like from the Resident Evil 2 video game. So I'm guessing at some point in the movie that these characters that are at the Arclay uh, Mansion, the Spencer Mansion, that they're going to end up underground and meeting, you know, Claire and, and Leon and stuff. So I'm going to guess that much like the Paul Anderson movie, there's a tunnel that connects the two places together. So that was just a cool image. Um, and then we have here, we have Brad Vickers and there's a zombie busting through the window here. It looks like Brad is, uh, as far as I know, because there's a full breakdown video done by the director of this movie, Johannes Roberts. And he talks about um, how there's a whole section of the movie where Chris and his stars team go into the Arkley, you know, uh, woods and stuff and into the Spencer mansion to look for the Bravo team. So it looks like they're still following that plot. At some point, the Alpha team went out to, to investigate these disappearances or murders or whatever's happening. And they, you know, cease contact with, uh, with their, you know, headquarters and the police chief. And so you have police chief, uh, you know, Irons actually radioing Brad Vickers here saying, hey, pick up your radio. And as Brad's looking down at the radio, that's when the zombie comes in and bites him. And I'm going to guess Brad freaks out, tries to fly away, and we'll see what happens here in a second of, uh, of what the al possible outcome of that is. Um, but here, there's a great shot of Chris and Jill. I just wanted to, you know, screen grab this because, I mean, they're two playable, main playable characters of the first Resident Evil game. So it's cool to get this shot of them. And they're clearly looking down at something. I'm, uh, clearly, they're in the helicopter. So I'm guessing this is maybe them seeing the other 
copter from the Bravo team crashed, or maybe they're just seeing the mansion and they're like, hey, maybe that's where our team is. Let's land here and go look. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of curious about that because I don't think they get, I'm guessing, guess they're not chased through the woods by dogs. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I'm thinking there's only one dog in the movie, uh, zombie dogs, uh, one Cerberus, and we'll talk about that in the next video when we break down the Resident Evil 2 footage. Um, so then here we got the the rest of the um, team. We have uh, Richard Aiken in the background and Albert Wesker in the foreground. And again, I know there's people wondering where Barry is and Rebecca and stuff like that. I'm just going to straight up assume that they're not in this movie at all. I haven't seen them listed in, in the credits or as a cast on IMDb or anyone, you know, any other actors that could potentially be them. I haven't seen in like behind the scenes photos. So I'm going to guess they just cut those characters out completely. And I, I don't know what the, the, the reason for that was, but um you know, maybe one day we can get a, a prequel story or a movie that takes place at the same time as this that stars them. Um, I don't know. I mean, or maybe they'll just save them and, and do a different adaptation of them in a future movie. Who knows? But uh, but this is the rest of the team. So these are the four members plus Brad Vickers of the Alpha team going in and looking for their compatriots, the Bravo team. And we're going to actually see a Bravo team member coming up here soon. But they're all flying into this space here, the mansion, the Spencer mansion, which this shot I love. I mean, when I saw this in the trailer, I was like, OK, that's amazing, because rarely do we get, you know, even in the video games like this, these great, you know, we, we didn't get to walk up to the mansion ourselves. And in the video game, we don't get to walk around the mansion outside. I mean, we do in the, you know, in the back part where the, you know, that leads to the greenhouse and leads to like Lisa Trevor's, you know, ca uh, cabin or whatever. Like we get to walk around a little bit on the property back there, but there's never been a, a, a Resident Evil game like adaptation, I guess, for the first game where you can walk around the front of the house. And so it's just always cool to me to see like artwork and concept art and then shots like this. Um, it's it's cool to see it in live action. It's, it's awesome. Um, yeah, they did a really good job. <laughs> So then we have this shot inside where it looks like they're in the library up on the second floor and you have Wesker and Jill here. And it's cool because Wesker in the trailer says, let's split up. And I watched a lot of trailer reactions for this movie and people were like, no, the splitting up's bad. Splitting up's bad. That's, don't do that. But if you know who Wesker is, I think it's great that he's the one to say, let's split up. Because obviously that's a horror movie trope where you have your team split up and everyone, <laughs> of course, dies after that. But I think that's what Wesker wants. Uh, I don't know yet if Wesker is a good guy or bad guy in this, uh, if he's going to stick to the games or not. Um, so so I, I, I guess I don't really know if, if he's doing this on purpose. But it would make sense that he would want to split up so he just has two less people he has to worry about. Um, and we're going to see a shot of him coming up here that, that might lean to him being a good guy. Um, or it could just be more of the facade uh, that, you know, he might be, cause that could be a cool twist in this movie that people don't expect coming. So I'm sorry if I'm spoiling it, but it, I mean, this is an old game. So I'm, I'm definitely thinking, I'm hoping I'm just talking to hardcore fans here. And if you're a casual Resident Evil fan or don't know, like, I'm sorry, <laughs> we're probably going to get into spoilers and stuff. Um, but also if you see behind Wesker there, you see the piano and that's cool that they put the piano in this shot, even if it's not used to open a secret door. Although Wesker seems to be moving towards uh, a particular bookcase, so I'm wondering if he's, you know, I don't know. We, we don't know what he's up to yet because we don't know what kind of version of Wesker we're going to get. But I just thought that was a cool shot. And Jill looks great in this shot. Um, but this is, she's being lit by the helicopter that Brad Vickers was in. And he's got about to crash. So we're going to see that shot here in a second. Uh, but first I want to do this because this is the shot in the trailer where I thought, nah, maybe they messed up the scaling of the, the, the mansion, like the main room. Because in the game, it just seems so much bigger. Like uh, when you're walking your feet, you know, like the sound of your, the, the combat boots hitting the ground echo throughout the whole room. Um, and if you run on the carpet, obviously it dampens that echo a little bit, but when they're running around on the marble floor, it's like really loud. And so when I saw this, I was like, ah, I mean, the, you know, Johannes Roberts says this is a one-to-one -one scale. Like if you put an actual person in, you know, in the video game and how big the room was compared to them. But I, I don't agree, <laughs> but I think that I I'm, I'm, could be misremembering the game uh, as well. Even though I play it all the time on my Switch, I play it in bed um, whenever videos are rendering. And I'm like, okay, this is going to take 30 minutes to render. If I go lay down, I'm going to fall asleep. So I usually sit at my computer and just play like 30 minutes of Resident Evil on the Switch, the first game, the remake. And uh, so I, I feel like I know the game pretty well, um, but I also trust their their 
you know, what he says. Um, if it's a one-to-one -one scale, maybe it's a more realistic one-to-one -one scale, whereas the game is a little bit more exaggerated one-to-one -one scale. And that's that's going to be my guess. But still, here's the shot that at first I was like, eh, I don't know, but it's still a big room. I mean, I think they still did a great job with this room. And if you look, this is Resident Evil 1 uh, room, not uh, Resident Evil Remake room, because at the top of the stairs there, there's not a secret door in the painting. But they do have the little tunnel behind the stairwell that you see to the right there. To Wesker's right, you'll see a little archway that leads to a little stairwell that goes behind the, the main stairs. And that's the room where Lisa Trevor typically is. So there, this is like half Resident Evil Remake version and half Resident Evil Original version, which is nice. It's a cool hybrid. All right, so this is the shot where I just grabbed. It's the helicopter crashing into the second floor. Obviously, Jill gets Wesker, and she's like, run, and they leave this room. But uh, you have, this is kind of recreating a scene from Resident Evil 2, the video game, where a helicopter, a random helicopter, crashes into the police department. And it looks like they changed that to make the event still happen, but now it's happening at the Spencer Mansion. So we have, you know, Brad Vickers, I'm guessing, infected and bit, crashing into the uh, second floor of the mansion. So that's kind of cool. I mean, it's neat to see that scene recreated and, and done, um, but also adds something new to the Spencer Mansion because I don't know if this place is going to be booby trapped or if it's going to have that kind of stuff. So you need something, you know, some kind of action sequence or something uh, for the for this place. And that seems like a, a pretty good one. Um, but I don't, know, I don't know if we're going to see the, sh the, the snakes or anything like that. And we'll, we'll, you'll see why in a second, because we have this shot here because the teams that split up, we had Jill and Wesker just a second ago, and uh, and now we have Chris and Richard. And this is a, a neat shot because it's Chad Rook, and Chad Rook has been really awesome on social media. If you haven't been following him on Instagram, he's been really great. He's been a great window into this movie. He's very passionate about this role, about playing Richard. Um, he's been posting pictures when he was on the set. He would take a couple behind the scenes thing, but nothing that spoiled too much, but he would just take pictures of like stained glass and, and a couple other stuff, which we're, we might see here in a second. And he's just, you know, having so much fun. And I think he went and did like a, a day or two of reshoots as well and just um, had a blast. And you can just tell this guy is so excited. And he posted this really cool thing today actually about, um, you know, working on this movie and how he believes it's 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 very uh, true to the games, as true as you can for an adaptation. Obviously, they have to change some stuff. But like he even says, he goes, well, when they remade Resident Evil 1, uh, you know, they added Lisa Trevor and they added story to it and added characters. Um, and he goes, when they remade Resident Evil 2, they changed a couple things. He goes, so adaptation is just natural. Like when you're when you're translating something from one medium to another or one medium to the same medium, he was just like, that's, you know, you usually add stuff. You usually, you know, go back and, and want to add something in um, to make it a little different than before. And he says, so that's what this movie's doing. And in his eyes, that's nothing different than what past Resident Evil games have done every time they add a new chapter to it or do another remake, um, as we've seen with Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3 remakes. So, And we'll probably continue to see with, I'm guessing, 4, and they'll probably remake a couple more Resident Evils, I'm guessing. I hope they do Code Veronica, too, because uh, I love Code Veronica. And we'll talk a little bit about that uh, Code Veronica homage that they put or scene they put in this movie. We'll talk about that soon. But yeah, just a cool shot of Richard. And it's him and Chris rolling up on the first zombie here. So I don't know who that zombie is eating. Um... But uh, in the video game, he was chewing on a Stars member, Kenneth Sullivan. So I'm wondering if that is a Stars member he's chewing on, because we are going to see another Stars member here in a second who is zombified, and uh, and so that's so I'm just wondering. I'm like, oh, is that is is it ju is that that close to the game where he's biting a Stars member? Um, but it doesn't seem to be Kenneth, or at least I can't tell from this angle. Um, and I wish the head rolled off. That would have been great, but maybe that's something they couldn't show in the trailer. But that would be cool if the person he's biting, if the head rolls off <laughs> away from the body like it does in a video game. Um, and then you have this zombie here who I think is in the mansion, I'm going to assume, because of the, the walls and stuff, how they look. But I guess it could be the police department too, but I just lumped this in with uh, footage for, for this video because, to be honest, there wasn't a ton of Resident Evil 1 stuff in this trailer. Uh, you'll see when we do the Resident Evil 2 video. It's going to be longer because there's a lot more. I think there's 40 pictures, 40 screenshots I took for this for the next video. Um, this one just has like, I think, 20 shots. So and we're nearing the end here. But yeah, this is a cool looking zombie. I was hoping we would see something like a crimson head or something like that. But um, I think they're just introducing zombies in this one. And maybe if they do future movies, we'll get a crimson head. But his face is kind of, you know, there's like red veins going through it and stuff. So it just kind of reminded me and his eyes look very intense. 
and it just seems like uh, and it's they're turning white which is kind of you know like i said that picture of jill earlier it looked like one of her eyes was turning white so uh, i'm curious if 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 jill's infected or if they're gonna set that story up in some way um I don't know. We'll see. Now, this next shot is a, a spoiler, I believe. So I don't want to show it right now. I want to give you a chance and, and you know, walk away now. If you don't want to see this character's death, I'm assuming this, this character dies here at this moment. Um, but I can't believe this was actually in the trailer. I was going through shot by shot and I was like, are you kidding me? They put this in the trailer? Uh, but it seems like we actually get a death scene here. So uh, again, if you don't want to see some, you know, one of the characters die, turn away now and skip to this time code down below. And that way uh, you can get past this part and then just watch the ending of the video. <laughs> so here you have, um, so spoiler, that's it. That's my last spoiler warning. Turn away now. And, uh, and for those who are still here, here's the image. Boom. Uh, this looks like Chad Rook uh, as Richard Aiken being chewed upon by a couple zombies. Um, that's crazy that this is in the trailer. <laughs> I guess they needed to show someone being eaten in the trailer and maybe this was just the footage they had to use or this is maybe this is one of the few scenes where we actually see zombies devour people. Um, whatever the case is, uh, this is, yeah, this is, looks like a character death. So I was just surprised that this was in the trailer. So I guess spoilers there for, for Richard and RIP Chad Rook. You, you're, you're amazing. Uh, and I said, it's cool that you have your trusty shotgun in the scene. But uh, it's 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 sad that it failed you because <laughs> I guess, you know, because in the games, Richard dies from the shark or the um, the snake, uh, Yawn or Neptune, depending on, you know, which version or, you know, if you save him earlier on, if you give him the cure or whatever. So maybe that's also something. Maybe he's just getting bitten here and they have to try to find the antidote for him. Um, or maybe like the video games, there's no antidote um, until later on. Or there's herb. I don't know. I guess there is herb. There, there was pictures of them on set but i think they're there just as an easter egg and, and not to be used actually so anyway spoiler over um because now we have this shot here of chris with his trusty lighter which is very cool because that's very reminiscent from the video games when you play the first res evil and when you play code veronica that's pretty much something that chris starts out with in both games so it's, it's cool that they have a shot here where he's using it to light this room up and what he does in this room is he actually lights up uh, another stars member who's infected who we're going to get to in a second because i have a few more images before then but uh this is the setup for that so we're, we are getting near the end of the video now but uh, i just thought this was a cool shot i mean i love i love the easter egg of the the, the you know lighter that's cool um and then this shot here of robbie uh, as chris you know leaning up against the wall or something he's gotten blood all over his neck i'm really curious about this i don't know where this takes place i'm going to guess this takes place somewhere around the mansion uh, and towards the end of the movie probably even because he looks pretty disheveled and he's sweaty and he's bloody um so yeah i'm, I'm kind of curious to see uh you know what this scene is here all right this shot here with wesker uh this has, he says umbrella's going to destroy this place and he looks like he's dying he's got a you know bleeding from his head um i'm curious because i think there was some fan leaks or rumors and you know me i don't i don't really talk about that stuff or get into that stuff I actually only know about it because I, I fully stay away typically from, uh, you know, I don't go on Reddit. I don't go on anywhere where people would post spoilers and, and leaks and stuff like that. But there have been, I guess, some some people talking. And I watched a video the other day, I think it was, and they, or maybe it was yesterday. And they mentioned, um, oh, yeah, there's you know rumors that Wesker, I think it was Let's Talk Resident Evil. Yeah, I think it was their their video, one of their videos. And they mentioned um, they mentioned that Wesker and Jill might be dating in this movie or there might be like a potential love triangle between her chris and wesker uh i don't know i mean i guess that's possible that they could do that and maybe that makes the betrayal of wesker even worse you know when he when he reveals that he's a, a bad person or a bad guy or working for umbrella but it seems here that he's he's dying maybe and he says to jill uh, i think that's jill uh saying umbrella's going to destroy this place but that could be a facade too that could be him just again throwing them off you know his scent um, maybe there there's a, a again a twist and that would be cool if they if they really make you doubt throughout the movie that wesker is a bad guy and then they hit you with the truth at the end i think that that's actually a cool idea i don't know I'm, i'd be down for that um because i think that's very reminiscent of the game so that'd be really really neat and then here's the last shot uh this is the shot so you see chris's lighter in the foreground there and then in front of him is a zombie coming at him with bloodshot eyes and he's wearing some kind of uniform if I'm not mistaken, I think this is Kevin Dooley, and uh, and I try to match his face with IMDb, and he looks like the actor who's playing Kevin Dooley. 
So I believe that's who this is. So it looks like Chris at some point is in one of the rooms. It looks like there's a table in the middle of the room there and this zombie's crawling at him. And I don't know if Chris is armed or what's going on. He's He's got his lighter for whatever reason. I guess the power went out. Maybe that's after the helicopter crashes into the building. Maybe all the power goes out. Um, but either way, uh, you know, Chris is, has a one-on-one confrontation with someone who could potentially be Kevin Dooley. And, and that would be heartbreaking. I think that would add some emotion to the scene if they set up, you know, Kevin and Chris as potential friends earlier in the movie. And then when he comes in to look for his friend, Kevin is a zombie. Um, so I don't know. That could be cool if that's if that's the case, just to add a little bit more emotion to this scene uh, because it doesn't look like Chris is drawing a gun and shooting him immediately either. So I'm, I'm kind of curious of, of, of that. Uh, so, so yeah, there you go. So those are all the images I have that look like they were from the Resident Evil 1 setting from the video games. And uh, potentially, I mean, one or two of them might not be, but uh, but I just wanted to make uh, break this down because there's so much to go over, and I just made sense to break these down into like 20 minute or less videos. So uh, so I'll try to cut it down the best I can, keep it under 20 minutes, and I'll have two more coming up. In the next video, we'll break down shots like this that I think are from the Resident Evil 2 video game, or you know, inspired by the Resident Evil 2 video game. And then the third video will just be 15, like 15 leftover shots that I just don't know where they take place really, or they, they're a fusion of Resident Evil 1 and 2, but they might just be worth talking about. And we'll get into that in the third video. So let me know what you thought of this breakdown and, uh, and your thoughts on these images down below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in Raccoon City. Peace.